By the end of this video, you will have an awareness of the development of types of programming languages and their classification into low and high level. You'll also know that low level languages are considered to be machine code and assembly language. Just before we start, we can look at what we mean by the word programming paradigm. Now, the word paradigm means to describe an example or pattern. In our computing context, we mean it as a way to describe an example of a way of doing things. So, software as we know is written using programming languages and as programmers you've come to expect programming languages to have facilities such as variables, loops, conditions, arrays etc. And this is whether you're been programming in Python, Visual Basic or another procedural language. The syntax or commands are slightly different but the underlying concepts haven't changed that much. And this is our programming paradigm. It's a way of doing things. Python and Visual Basic are similar because they come from the same family of languages. But there are other ways of doing things. There are other programming paradigms. Now, at a very top abstract level, we can sort all programming languages into two broad categories. They are low-level languages and high-level languages. And it's a high-level language which you will have been using to learn to program. So how did computer languages evolve? Well, when computers were first invented, the only way to program them was to work in the actual binary numbers that represented different instructions. Those instructions, as well as the addresses in memory where data was being stored, also had to be referred to as numbers. The actual programmer would have to program the exact sequence of ones and zeros directly into the computer. This sequence of ones and zeros is called machine language and it accesses the hardware directly to execute the instructions the program has provided. A consequence of this, of course, was in the early days there were very, very few people who were able to program. Remembering the exact sequence of ones and zeros to carry out even an incredibly simple task was a very complex process, and the tiniest of errors was called the program not to work. In the late 1940s, a language was developed which simply took each of the binary numbers that stood for instructions and addresses and allowed them to be written instead as groups of letters. Now this is the birth of the assembly language. There's a direct one-to-one -one relationship between assembly language and machine code. In other words, you supply a single line of assembly code and it is directly looked up and returns one line of executable machine language. Now, Obviously a consequence of moving from machine language to assembly language is that now programming was a lot more accessible. Remembering the command add num1, as opposed to the string of binary ones and zeros for the machine, made the language a lot more accessible. Now the languages we've been looking at so far are referred to as low-level languages, and that's because assembly language, and especially machine language, are incredibly close to the actual hardware. The first language that could go further than this were developed in the early 1950s, the first of those being called Fortran. These languages differed from assembler as each instruction could give rise to many lines of machine code. So now we had a one-to-many relationship. These much more complex languages are called high-level languages. The early high-level languages were BASIC, Fortran, C and Pascal later on. Later on came more object oriented language, the birth of Java, and visual language like Visual Basic. These will be some of the ones that you've been learning to program in most likely, and these are all called high level languages. <laughs> 